Okay, guys, so in this video, we're going to be going over the Jim Crow era, which was a period after the Civil War and into the mid-1900s where uh, even though black people, uh, of course, African Americans had earned, uh, you know, citizenship and the right to vote and all that stuff, uh, in many cases, they still weren't treated as equal. There was still uh, pretty rampant racism and segregation and some awful things and even some pretty terrible violence okay so uh, you are going to see some things in this video that are obviously you know pretty awful but it is part of the curriculum and you know furthermore we need to learn about uh, you know some of the mistakes we've made in the past and taking a look at what some of this stuff was and what it looked like uh, that's all important to that process so uh, here we go so after reconstruction in the south okay many states passed what was known as Jim Crow laws uh, so this was the forced segregation of the races in public places so what segregation means is basically separation so uh, you know you'll see this commonly uh, this drinking fountain situation where you know white people had to drink from one fountain and black people colored people from the other okay so this applied to schools this applied to restaurants businesses uh, really many aspects of southern life so uh, in addition to this segregation there were other laws that limited freedom for african americans in a variety of different ways okay so uh, voting restrictions okay voter intimidation access to jobs um, interracial relationships were often uh, illegal or, um, you know, heavily restricted. Um, the education system, of course, you know, there was segregation and, um, you know, this debate over separate but equal would take uh, decades to play out in the court system. So uh, this was a thorough uh, system of discrimination and segregation in many cases. Okay, so uh, in addition to that, uh, there was violence, intimidation, and crimes uh, were committed, um, you know, by groups, you know, of course, like the KKK, which uh, really come along later in this period. But uh, this concept of lynchings, okay, where mobs would get together uh, and essentially, um, you know, commit violence against African Americans, whether that was uh, burning them or uh, hanging um, you know, just horrible crimes, and essentially the mob decided, okay, who was innocent and guilty of crimes uh, without any uh, influence from the courts, okay, so obviously some uh, pretty horrible uh, things going on. Uh, people would go to spectate um, at these, uh, you know, public executions, uh, which, you know, obviously is something that uh, would, you know, play a big role in leading to all sorts of uh, problems in the community that uh, wouldn't get solved until uh, the 1960s, 1970s. Um, so one thing we need to know is called eugenics. Okay, so it's the practice of, quote-unquote, improving the genetic quality of the human species by discouraging certain groups from reproducing and encouraging other groups to reproduce. Okay, so what eugenics means is they're trying to control who reproduces together to produce the best possible uh, human specimens, basically. And, you know, we think about eugenics as far as, you know, like science fiction movies go, you know, stuff like Gattaca or uh, some other movies. But um, back in the progressive era, the early 1900s, uh, you know, there were prominent politicians who supported this uh, policy of eugenics. Um, you know, even in the United States, uh, you know, and we could go on and we'll talk more about that in class. But uh, the idea was, you know, let's, you know, it's kind of this pseudoscience where let's take the best of the best and try to produce more. And of course, the, you know, the byproduct of that is, um, you know, you're going to be discriminating against, you know, what is perceived as a lesser uh, genetic uh, group. Uh, so uh, eugenics, the movement was uh, going on throughout the 20th century, uh, obviously, we learned about it last year with Hitler and uh, the Holocaust, um, and, you know, and their, you know, their idea was that, you know, if you put, uh, you know, uh, you know, they, they made these charts where it was like uh, you're, you know, 100 percent Jewish or 75 percent or 50 percent or 25. And then, you know, based on that, you have kids and, you know, it goes down the line and so on and so forth. You're this percentage, this, this percentage, that. Um, and. 
uh, of course, now we know scientifically uh, this is just uh, silliness. But uh, back then, you know, they were using this "quote unquote" science to, uh, you know, do some pretty terrible things. So, uh, in the state of Virginia, in particular, um, a court case by the name of Buck v. Bell, uh, this upheld sterilization and uh, made it legal. Okay, and across the United States, 65,000 Americans were sterilized. Okay, which of course means uh, it, you know, uh, performing, uh, you know, whatever uh, surgery or whatever needs to be done on them in order to prevent them uh, from reproducing. Uh, so, uh, where were the courts, as usual? Okay, the Supreme Court, lagging about 100 years behind the standards of the time, uh, they rule in Plessy v. Ferguson. Uh, that's a court case that uh, separate but, but equal does not violate the 14th Amendment. Okay, this essentially upholds all these horrible Jim Crow laws. And, you know, it's another example, at least in my opinion, of the Supreme Court, uh, you know, not really standing for uh, what's right. Okay, and people at the time knew this as well. Uh, we can get into that discussion if we want. But uh, again, the lesson, as always, Okay, if you take one thing away from this class, uh, you know, here it is from Mark Twain. Okay, laws control the lesser man, right conduct controls the greater one. Okay, so all of this stuff was legal. Okay, so the, uh, the Tuskegee study, uh, study, the sterilization, the eugenics, okay, the, uh, you know, the Jim Crow laws, the segregation, that was all legal. Okay, so that doesn't make it right just because it's a law. Okay, what makes something right is if it's right. Okay, and, you know, we can have a debate over what that means, but uh, just because something's a law doesn't mean it's okay. Now, uh, what ends up happening is something called the Great Migration, uh, where many African Americans move uh, to the north to try and escape, um, you know, these horrible Jim Crow laws in the south. Uh, but sadly, um, you know, it might not be as bad in the north, uh, but there still is some uh, discrimination and prejudice. Um, and... You know, we're going to go over these reformers in class a little bit more, so uh, just kind of a brief thing, but obviously there's people in the African-American community um, that are looking to uh, make the situation better uh, and, you know, improve conditions for uh, all African-Americans. So uh, Ida B. Wells um, leads an anti-lynching crusade, um, pressures the government to take action, uh, so obviously an important figure, Booker T. Washington, uh, kind of had some famous back and forth with uh, W.E.B. Du Bois. Uh, so they had different thoughts on how best to achieve uh, equality for the African-American community. Um, so Booker T. thought, uh, you know, equality um, was was best achieved through uh, education and economic success. So worry about education first, then let's worry about these uh, segregation uh, you know, laws and stuff. Whereas W.E.B. Du Bois uh, thought kind of the opposite uh, founder, um, played a big role in founding the uh, NAACP, which is a organization that um, seeks to advance, uh, you know, the interests of black people in the country. And, of course, he played a big role in founding that. Um, so we'll talk more about these reformers in class uh, but that's going to do it for the Jim Crow era.